free wheel. I mean, you guys sort of were you know the dominant premium video ad server with your MRM products and everything. The Comcast acquisition occurred you know last year. I mean, what are you at a point in time? Because your aspirations are much more than just being a video ad server, right? Like, what's your trajectory right now as a business? So. For us, actually, the, the vision is the same as when the company was founded. Um, so our, our goal, um, and we're continuing to push on this in 2015, is to enable the premium uh, cable nets, broadcasters, MVPDs, those that have premium video, to be able to increasingly unify their inventory and their campaigns um, and be able to plan, forecast, manage ad rights, ad serve, um, report and account at that, regardless of screen. Um, and do that at scale. So we're continuing uh, since the acquisition from Comcast just to accelerate our efforts to be able to support our very focused client base um, in, in, in achieving that goal. Okay. Um, and you know, where does, when we talk about convergence, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you guys? Is that, is convergence just the you know, this sort of distribution of derivative content from the first screen or television onto pure digital platforms like mobile or the web, or, you know, where does VOD fit in that mix? Like, what's your, your set of optics on the marketplace yeah. right now? Um, I would say convergence is nearly as bad a word as programmatic. Or um, engagement. <laughs> exactly. Engagement too. But for, for, us, for us, really, um, the consumer sees TV as TV. An episode of Family Guy is the same regardless of where you watch it. Um, and I think someone made a comment earlier around the, the need to re-aggregate that audience. And our goal is to enable the publishers to re-aggregate <laughs> that audience. So um, uh, set-top box becomes a really important component of that. In our opinion, it's, it's, it's both one of the, um, the largest amounts of untapped, long-form premium content that there is to monetize, number one. Uh, and number two, it's, a, it's an exceptionally safe environment where you're sitting on your sofa in a lean back experience right. watching on a large 55 inch screen and therefore it's viewable. Um, so our goal is to be able to you know, create and own the, the living room whereby we're enabling our publishers to be able to equally monetize their set-top box VOD inventory uh, through dynamic ad insertion as well as their uh, connected device over the top inventory which we think is actually massively under monetized right now. Um, across across our, our data sets about 25% of um, total ad viewing or, or video viewing is, t is taking place on non-desktop environments, yet the monetization of those environments is uh, less than it probably should be, despite the fact it is arguably uh, much safer right. and more viewable. Um, and that comes down to, again, to, 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 to challenges in, in, a, in how that gets monetized. So you guys produced your monetization report sort of the fourth quarter. It's, you know, uh, I mean, year over year, I think it was like 528% growth from a, a base that wasn't so substantial to yep. Tracy's point, right? But uh, what percentage of video, premium video viewing right now is occurring on mobile? So uh, off, de off desktop, it's around 20, 27%. Okay. Um, and the greatest growth is coming from um, OTT devices. That's in the US, to be specific. In, in the US, yep. exactly. Um, mo mobile is over 100% growth year over year. Um, but again, similar challenges with mobile as there is with, with connected devices. Um, but I think a lot of the growth in the non-desktop viewing is actually coming on OTT. And the reason for that is um, the marquee sports events that have happened over the last couple of years, whether it be the, the Olympics, the World Cup, or others. Um, we saw, I think last year, uh, um, uh, 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 over 200% growth in live viewing. Uh -huh. um, and I think consumers are getting educated about the ability to either simulcast their, their, their viewing or watch, um, watch their premium content across other devices in live streams. Um, that brings with it its own challenges of being able to kind of right. monitor those live stream environments. But I think we're going to see a lot more of that this year as well. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I want to ask a really direct question in a, in a non sort of adversarial way or confrontational way. But, I mean, the reality is that you are now owned by Comcast, right? So how do you maintain that? You know, and I want to talk about the, the integration, the organization, because you're part of the platform now, right? So how do, how do your clients manage the balance between the same party that is Freewheel, that technology solution, is helping them optimize revenue and ensure they're driving their advertising P&L for video, right? Which is ever increasingly more important because your parent has a larger percentage of ownership of the total distribution base so that you know there's going to be subscriber revenue price pressure. I mean, how are you managing that in the marketplace? Because there's a lot of noise around it, right? Mm -hmm. So as from an organization, the culture, how you've integrated a Comcast, like how yeah. are you dealing with that? 
Um, the answer is pretty simple. Um, we're, we're being run as a, a fiercely independent uh, standalone business. Um, and there's precedent there with Comcast with the other businesses that they've, they've acquired, Strata being uh -huh. one, one example. We, most people don't even know it's owned by Comcast. And, and I think the, the, the key for us and one of the reasons that the acquisition made a ton, a ton of sense for us is because um, uh, Comcast realizes that our value is in um, supporting the TV ecosystem to be able to um, maintain the, the business models, the integrity, and the growth of that ecosystem. Um, and Comcast is a kind of key, key part of that. So we're being run as a separate unit. Um, we are just continuing to, 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 be, um, to be funded in a way that enables, to, enables us to accelerate our goal of helping our clients kind of unify their inventory and campaigns at scale. Um, and it's, I, think, I think our clients understand that it's in you know, the collective interest for us to be, to be that, um, as you said, with your kind introduction at the beginning, that kind of leading tech company that is supporting a very focused set of clients to, 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 to grow and, and, and unify their, their inventory. So I'm not going to ask you to talk on behalf of the platform, right? But if you talk about, like, if you holistically talk about an integrated end-to-end -end solution or a stack, right, yep. which is what Comcast is aspiring to build, I'll speak on behalf of Comcast in this conversation. That's what I've least read and I've inferred, right? So you talk about an integrated stack as a solution, which we don't really have in linear or in VOD. Mm -hmm. um, it's all kind of been piecemeal, right? And you, you look at you know, the eventuality of what that means. The X1 platform is still a very small yep. base, right? It's built off of the, uh, dovetailing off of the capabilities of that platform, which is still only 10% of like Comcast footprint right now. How much is the potent, the, realizing the potential of your platform tied to what the installed technology is at the household level in the set-top box itself? Yep. Like, how closely are you sort of relying upon realizing the aspiration of what you're promising to premium video publishers on that actual hardware that gets in the household? Yeah, well, just to be, just to be clear, clarify one point, we're, we're not integrated with the platform or any of the other okay. the tech partners Thank you for Comcast. clarifying that. We're, we're not, we're, we're, again, a separate, um, fiercely independent company, and, um, and, and that, when I say integrated, I just mean I'm assuming the technology is integrated, not necessarily the business. No, but again, again, we're an open platform where we're, okay. we work with all the, at least with the platform, we work with all the other OVP players, and, and that's really, really important Thank for, you for free will that. if we're able to kind of continue to advocate for our client base. Okay. So, um, but in terms of um, in terms of where we are in terms of being able to monetize set top box VOD inventory and others in 2015, I think you're going to see. Uh, you're going to see the ball move there for the first time. Okay. Um, again, it's been one of those things that's been talked about for many times, but I think there's incredible pressure from both our, uh, the, the publishers wanting to be able to effectively monetize that to get the scale they want, and from the buy side, who is looking for an increasing amount of uh, premium video content as um, a lot of the, uh, uh, the exposure of fraud and other bad activities that were going on right. were starting to um, make the supply of premium video even tighter and therefore having to uh, combine dynamic digital video inventory with set-top box inventory becomes really important this year. But is the hardware that sits in the living room critical uh, for the ability to deploy, just if we just talk about VOD, like yeah. real ubiquitous uniform dynamic ad insertion? We're, we're, we're technically there ready to go. Okay, awesome, yeah. that's great. Thanks James, I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, appreciate it.